In Pro Presenter 7, your content is the hero and the interface is a trusty sidekick. When you start using the new interface, you'll notice how it's set up in a logical left to right workflow. So on the left side of the screen, we start by selecting either a library or a playlist and you can have multiple libraries inside ProPresenter 7. When we select a library, we'll see all of the presentations inside that library. Or I can select a playlist and I can see all of the presentations, headers and media that are contained inside that playlist. We can add new libraries, new presentations, playlists, and planning center services by clicking here, or we can minimize this area to give us a larger view, but we can still toggle between different libraries and playlists by clicking on the title. Next, let's select some slides and start them playing back, and we can see them on the right side in our preview area. So again, we started on the left by selecting a playlist, then we selected a presentation inside that playlist, and then we selected some slides in the center to play back, and now on the right side, we're seeing a preview of our final output. Above that preview, you'll see new indicators letting you know that our audience and stage screens are both live, but we can toggle them off simply by clicking on them. Now this doesn't affect the preview, it only affects the final outputs. You'll also see brand new clearing buttons. We have a large clear all button as well as new clear layer buttons. And these clearing layer buttons are only active when content is being sent to those layers. Now ProPresenter is made up of multiple layers, so this is an easy way to visualize what layers are active and what stacking order they're in. Now below our preview area, we can toggle between our different screens. So I have different audience screens and stage screens that I've set up in advance. And below there, we have our transport controls. Currently, we're seeing the transport controls for our presentation layer, but I can also see them for our announcements layer or for our audio bin. Now our new announcements layer doesn't have anything playing back to it, but if I go to my announcement loop, you'll see that there's a target set sending this to the announcements layer. So now when I click to play this back, you'll notice nothing changes on the main output, but we do have an indicator that there's an auto advance enabled. Now if I switch to my lobby screen, you'll see my announcement loop showing up because it's being sent to that layer. You'll see we have a new indicator showing that the announcement layer is live as well as our slide and media layers. And if I clear this out, you'll see our slide and media layers playing below. I can also switch back to my transport controls for my presentation layer, switch back to our main output, and then I can either pause this or I can clear all. Below your transport controls, you have your audio bin, which can be made up of multiple playlists. Again, we can minimize this and switch between playlists by clicking on the title, and you'll see all of the items in that playlist. You can shuffle through them, filter them, and change your transition length. And then finally, across the bottom of the screen, you'll see our media bin, which is made up of multiple different playlists, and these playlists can be either regular playlist or a smart playlist that brings in all media content inside a folder automatically, or you can create playlist folders. Plus, we have access to our video inputs by clicking down here. Again, we can toggle this off and switch between our different playlists by clicking on the title and choosing different playlists. Below our media bin, we have quick access to the global media transitions like cut, dissolve, and advanced transitions that we can choose from the list above. We can also filter through our content, change how it looks, and change our thumbnail size. We have very similar options for our presentation area. So let's take a look at a song. And as you can see, we can change the global slide transition here, which is different than the global media transition that you find below. We can also click here to add new slides to this presentation, and we can change up the view over here. Currently, we're in a grid view, but we could also go to Easy View. Another way we can access Easy View is simply by holding down the tilde key, and it will pull up our Easy View. And then finally, we have our Outline View. And each of these views has its own custom settings that you can access here. And you can change the size of your thumbnails or your outline by using the slider. And then at the top, we'll see the name of the presentation and any currently selected arrangement. And then over on the right side, we have some icons for other presentation features. First, we have the slideshow button, which will set an automatic go to next timer for every slide in a presentation. Next, we can click to see any operator notes about this presentation and we can add and alter them. 
Next is the arrangement button where we can add and change our arrangements, followed by the presentation timeline where we can automate the playback of your slides to an audio track. Next is the new target icon where we can change our presentation destination. By default, it's set to presentation, but we can switch it to announcements and then it will play back to the brand new announcements layer. Then finally, we can set a transition for this particular presentation, which will take priority over the global transition that we set earlier below. Now let's look at our main toolbar. On the left is search and search is now persistent inside ProPresenter 7, meaning wherever I move this search to it's going to stay there each time I open it up. And an easier way of opening up than clicking on the icon is to hit command or control F on your keyboard. Here you can search through all of your ProPresenter libraries as well as song select and we can grab any presentation and simply drag that into our different playlists. After that, we have options for text formatting, as well as we can go through and apply different themes to our presentations. And then the next big change is with our show area. So currently we're in the show view of ProPresenter, but if we click to the edit view, it's gonna bring us into ProPresenter's brand new editor, which is an awesome editing experience. But if we need to get back to our show at any time, you simply click on show. We can also switch over to an inline reflow editor, which is a great way to edit large portions of text while still seeing what it looks like on your final slides. Or we could click on Bibles to pull up the Bible interface. And we have access to even more editors by clicking on more. And we could go to our stage editor, theme editor, CCLI props, or mask editors. Then finally in the center, we have access to other features like timers, messages, props, and stage controls. And then on the far right of the screen, we can pull up the Renewed Vision Store or turn on and off our media bin. So hopefully you can see how the interface in ProPresenter 7 was designed to help you focus on your content and control your presentations.